Thanks for sticking around. So, uh, first of all, do you guys have anything you want to say up front before we begin with? Yes, where's our mom at? Mama! Oh. <laughs> our mom and her husband, Charlie, are here. They, they didn't want to come at the beginning of the week because they said they wouldn't see us. So, awesome. thanks for sticking around with them. Um, um, what was your... How did you come to this story? What was your inspiration for making this the kind of origin story element of it? Uh, it's a long one. Um, we, and, and some of the color little pieces in here show up uh, from 2009 when we were just scouting on the street on the outskirts of Vegas. It's an area that was always really resonant with us, you know, to get off the strip to see the outside of that, to see where the glowing lights fade and the shadows are cast. And in 2009, during the recession, it, it especially landed hard in Vegas. And so to go to those outskirts and see, you know, people's lives changing, people who maybe arrived in Vegas for one reason, but were leaving in a different way, uh, just the, the tenor of that really, really captured us. And then through different films, um, you know, obviously we didn't shoot in 2009, but through different films, we, we, we honed in on some other ideas, ideas of, of, of community and spaces that people share and trying to limit our palette in such a way that we would arrive just within four walls with a set group of people in a finite amount of time and to let that speak to the present moment, which in, in this case was the end of uh, 2016. You know, time, no matter where you are in the political spectrum is sort of a, uh, a raw time in America. And to see people in a chosen oasis choosing to be, be with each other and talk about the experience of being who they are as individuals in this moment in America, we thought was really interesting. As well, um, and I'll, I'll keep going with that, sorry. Uh, the bar, why the bar? When I was nine years old, I saw the Iceman cometh uh, on Broadway. And uh, this Eugene O'Neill, four and a half hour Eugene O'Neill play about drunks and their pipe dreams in a bar. And that was pretty profound for a nine year old kid and has always really stuck with me. <laughs> I recall when I first wrote to you guys about this, I compared it to the Iceman cometh. Man, brilliant. Yeah, powerful stuff. I'm man. just pointing out here how brilliant I am, I guess. Yes, yes. <laughs> Good. Good. Uh, Bill, do you have anything you want to add? Well, I mean, it started even earlier than that. Like, I can remember uh, our uncle, you know, would pick us up to babysit us, and he would take us to, like, a bar, this bar called Scudsy's to watch wrestling. And we, you know, these little dudes would be sitting at the end of the bar watching this wild world of storytellers and larger-than-life characters. And, you know, so the sort of fascinations from pretty early on. What happened to the people after the bar closed? They walked off set. <laughs> yeah, this is this is an incredible experience here, and um, you know so much credit to to Sundance and their programming team who are making very bold choices. The way that Bill and I are making our films is an evolution of a conversation with each other that has all, all up to this point really been embraced by the nonfiction community, but our methods are uh, perhaps not academically nonfiction. So. This bar, while it is a, an actual brick and mortar bar, um, is not uh, is a created scenario. So these people, all of these people, were brought into this space over time, knowing the scenario that they were getting into. And so the bar stands in for a great many places, hundreds of bars that we scouted over time, and um, and we gave them this very simple framework. Uh, so that they could, you know, mo as mostly non-actors, um, could could respond to this this moment in time and exist within it, knowing a basic story in their minds. But um, the Roaring Twenties is still a bar you can go to. Sure, right here. What was the story with the woman at the end of the bar with yes. the dark hair? <laughs> Cheryl. Yeah. yeah. What was the story of the woman at the end of the bar with the dark hair? Whose name is Cheryl, right? Yeah, Cheryl. Um, so we, we knew such a long process trying to get to the making of this movie and knowing that we needed to sort of own this container um, in order to make the film so that we could create a safe space, so that we could not necessarily dictate what everyone was doing, but dictate the, the scenario. 
the owners of the bar said, well, I mean, that all sounds insane, we'll go along with it, but you're gonna need somebody from the bar to be there. And so, and so we said, um, all right, Cheryl, um, you can either you can either sit in the closet in the back of the bar with our sound man for the whole shoot, or would you like to be in a movie? And that is so much of who Cheryl is in real life in that actual bar, is just this friendly face holding court, making sure everything goes the way that it needs to. And for us, that was a perfect function and also an inside way to you know, it, it's a closed set. It's just Bill and I and all of these people. We didn't want any intrusion. We didn't want any of this, you know, movie magic stuff going on. You know, it's like we plant, we planted microphones. And Bill and I had cameras, and this room was full of people. And Cheryl was there just to make sure everything didn't completely go off the rails. But I'm so glad that somebody finally asked the question about Cheryl. We will let her know. <laughs> Over here. So that location seemed like a nightmare for sound. Uh, but it was. Set, but your sound design was like pretty damn good. So I'm just curious if you could talk, talk about how you achieved that and some of the problems that you ran into and some of the hurdles you got over. Sure. Uh, yeah, so our, our, our buddy that uh, ran sound tried to get uh, a lav mic on everybody. There were also mics up and down the bar and that back area where people were sitting. So I think there's 14 <laughs> tracks of audio. Um, so, you know, we got as much as we could. Once it came to post, yeah, it was a nightmare because the jukebox is <laughs> on. We tried to keep the jukebox off, but th they would just mutiny and, you know, <laughs> we had no choice. It was 22 of them against us. Um, so it was just a lot of, uh, we, we did our uh, post uh, mix at Red Hook Post in Brooklyn and they um, really saved us. Okay, so how many days and nights did she? The primary narrative, what is really going on here, is an 18-hour, two-camera, non-stop, unbroken scene. Uh, and, then, and then we learned from that and did some additional um, you know, framing and went out into the streets of Vegas and um, sort of extrapolated their stories. There's a whole other film within this film that isn't included that Bill and I did out on the streets of Vegas going to people's just wherever they went. and. Uh, Boy, I would love to see that, but nobody really wanted to see that. Because everybody wanted to stay in the bar. It's a movie that takes place within that. The bar is its own character, and um, so we reduced it down. But yeah, I mean, most of it is just this big primary chunk of change that uh, sort of fed the whole thing. Well, that is, uh, how did the business with the three teenagers come about? Um, that Trey is Shay's son, so uh, the bartender. So he really was there. Uh, and those really are his buddies. And we thought that that spoke to, you know, I mean, so something about it that wasn't necessarily posited in, in advance was just how the ages would speak to each other. And generationally, the kids in the alley eventually find their way into the bar. The people who find their way into the bar eventually are the regulars at the bar. The regulars at the bar eventually are the people who are, you know, at the, at the end of it. And, um, and so we wanted to include that, you know, just that there is an outside world and also there is a progression of, of all of this. Uh, so I'm totally have time for two more, and one will be the lady all the way in the back there. Hey, this is Eric from MyOnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.